gentlemen, we are here down at Venice Beach. We got some of the finest performers are gonna be jumping in your face. In the late 1800s, a rich East Coast tobacco heir named Abbott Kenny skipped college to spend his teens traveling the world. Returning home through San Francisco, his train was delayed by snow, so he decided to seek California. When he was shown the saltwater marshes south of Santa Monica, like a crazed Don Quixote, he declared, they're just like the canals I saw in Italy. He just needed to dig them out a bit and hire a few gondoliers. He did just that, and surrounded his new canal system with ballrooms, roller coasters, and a horse racing track. He built mansions along the banks and filled the waters with gondolas and rowboats. He held concerts and art exhibits. It was the first city in America built solely for fun, and he called it Venice of America. By 1910, hundreds of thousands took the red car trolley from downtown LA to play on the beach and gamble in the casinos at night. Kenny died in 1920 and the world moved on. During the Depression, the government had the canals filled in to provide jobs. Essentially, all of Kenny's canal system was demolished. When I was young, I always wondered why Grand Boulevard was so stupidly wide. Then I learned it was once full of water, Kenny's version of Italy's Grand Canal. Even though Abbott Kenny's fantasy city is gone, what remains is that, unlike any city, it was built solely for the purpose of fun. It was the original fun zone. During the Depression, the workers hired to fill in the canals went on strike, and the few narrow canals we know today were left, filled with the rancid water pouring in from what is now Marina del Rey. In the 50s, someone got the bright idea they could bring it all back and build Pacific Ocean Park on one of their main piers. A whole lot of fun while it lasted, it closed within 10 years. Venice became a gang-infested backwater where if you could handle the stench, you could rent a bungalow on a canal for 40 bucks a month. The triangle-shaped neighborhood bordered by Pacific Avenue, Venice Boulevard, and West Washington Boulevard, a street we now call Abbot Kenny, was the turf of the Shoreline Crips and known as the dreaded Triangle Streets. When I was a kid, you didn't go into the Triangle Streets. While Venice was a no-go zone through the 50s, it became heaven on earth to the hippies, beat artists, and surfers of the 1960s. The dilapidated warehouses between Pacific Avenue and the beach became the art studios of Walter Hopps' Ferris Gallery Gang. Even the collapsing P.O.P. Pier turned out to be a mecca for surfing. When I was in high school, it was the best break south of Malibu. Clean right sliders that began with a drop into the pier, bottom turned out through the pylons. Muscle Beach, which was originally next to the Santa Monica Pier, launched the national health nut craze. In the 70s, new fat rubber wheels replaced the rickety steel jobs making skateboarding serious fun. Abandoned houses with a swimming pool became a new gang turf for surfers like the Dogtown crew. Venice was cool, Venice was fun again. By 2000, you weren't cool if you didn't know Venice was cool. Word spread and Silicon Valley, always on the prowl for the next big thing, had to be here. Google bought the old Chai Day building and soon YouTube, Snapchat, and the rest followed. Then the editors of GQ magazine declared Abbott Kenny Boulevard the coolest block in America, which many locals would say immediately made it the least coolest. Real estate prices skyrocketed. But after 120 years, don't count Venice out. There's a reason people are flocking here right now. Venice Beach continues to remain true to Abbott Kenny's original vision as a city founded for one purpose, fun. Hustle Beach, baby. <laughs> Skate it up. And knowing the surfers, I went to school with them, and they were tough guys. The, the sir, you don't, you didn't fuck around with surfers. And when the greasers had come in from the valley, that's what they call them, the greasers. Man, it was you know, stabbing time. I mean, that wasn't the first time a brick wall dressed up as a stairway to heaven. 